So I think we are all set. Yes, so hi. I'm the last one. So thank you for not falling asleep yet. And I think for your own safety, don't during my talk. Uh, my name is Jasper. I will be trying to fly some drones today. So let's, let's make this an exciting uh, last talk. First of all, I want to thank the organizers for having me. Uh, I think Amsterdam EAS is, is pretty famous here in Amsterdam. It's like the longest running JavaScript meetup thing. Uh, they've changed names a bit, but, but kind of the Amsterdam JS brand is, is pretty famous uh, uh, for developers here in Amsterdam. And thank you, Floor, for being such a delight today and kind of keeping us going. <laughs> Just put food in your mouth. <laughs> I'm, I'm so sorry about that timing. Um, and thank you for putting yourself in harm's way uh, to see me uh, flying some drones today. Um, so first, uh, a little bit about me. Uh, I'm local. I'm here from Amsterdam. Uh, as Floor said, during the day I'm CTO of a sustainable startup. Um, and uh, this is my website with some information. Uh, and, but by night, and this is of course the most important, I'm a drone enthusiast. Um, so uh, this was uh, last summer in Spain. Uh, I went hiking and then of course I had to bring my own drone and make all these Lord of the Rings shots, uh, which made it uh, look even more spectacular than it, than it already was. But that's just, uh, just a little bit about me. So let's talk about the goal of this talk. Uh, it's showing you how to control uh, multiple drones using JavaScript. We're going to do that in three steps. So the first step is just choosing the right drone. The second step will be uh, controlling a single drone. And in the third step, uh, we'll be controlling uh, multiple drones at once. If you have questions, uh, I mean, after this talk, it's going to be the party. I think we have to eat first. But come see me, and I'm happy to talk to you uh, about this. Uh, so this is kind of obligatory legal stuff, you're here at your own risk. Uh, this actually happened, this was, <laughs> this was pretty bad, uh, Winter Olympics a few years ago. Um, but rest assured, the drones will be flying, they are not very powerful, so that's a good thing. They are light and therefore not powerful and therefore they won't do that much. Uh, and it, and uh, let me get one. They have a cage around them, so actually just Consider these small horses, like, like what you do when you feed horses, you have to have the flat hand, you know, right? Yes, that's the rule, always have the flat hand, it's the same with the drone, if it comes near you, just push it away. Just don't point fingers, because, you know, then um, uh, that goes wrong. So, so actually, in the name of science, yesterday I bought some hot dogs, because I read somewhere that they resemble, resemble fingers. And this is a flying drone, and it's at full speed. And you'll see that if you put in the, the hot dog, it, the sto it stops the propeller. So you, <laughs> you do see a bit of hot dog on my shirt. <laughs> but um, yeah, that's, that's science for you. Uh, <laughs> so um, yeah, as I promised, uh, choosing the right drone, that's step one. Uh, so let's talk about the evolution of drones first a little bit. So this was actually me 10 years ago, uh, back uh, when this was completely new. You had to solder your own drones. Like back then, uh, this was completely new. Uh, you would get these microchips from this guy in Germany who kind of started this whole thing. And you would have to yeah, get all these parts, solder them, actually build this. I mean, it took me like two weeks just to, to build this one thing. Um, and then, but, but, but back then, 10 years ago, these drones were amazing. Like, I don't know, I think everybody kind of remembers the first time. By now, they're pretty normal. And, uh, but the first time you see this drone flying, it's just crazy. Like, how is it just hovering over there? So this was 10 years ago, and then it was just really, like, edgy. And yeah, so th these are my first flights, and I was just too scared to do anything. So I keep flying in the bushes because I was just, ah. This was, I mean, these were... Yes, this was me in the beginning. But then, then it became interesting because then, of course, the general public started noticing the, 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 uh, the potential of these drones. So you started getting companies who would build or provide RTF packages, which stands for ready to fly, which just means you go to the shop, you buy a drone, and the same afternoon you're flying. Um, but these drones are pretty expensive. Like the one that you see here, I, I believe this is the DJI Phantom. It's a Phantom, you know it. It's, it's a really famous one because it's, it's just an amazing piece of hardware. But I, I think it goes for like 2,000 euros, something around that. Yeah, it's, it's just, uh, so it's expensive. And it's completely worth it because these are amazing pieces of hardware. But, but yeah, they are expensive. So it's not really useful for what I'm trying to do. It's just 
having fun with them because I'm, I don't know about your financials, but I don't have 2,000 euros just to throw away in, in case of a crash. So that's why the third step is relevant and that's why we're here today. Cheap, small drones and those, those really opened the gates and that's, that's what we're going to talk about today. So let's talk about the requirements. Um, first of all, they have to be cheap, again, because we're experimenting. You're crashing a lot, you're trying stuff, so I don't, I don't have 2,000 euros to, to experiment with. Um, they uh, should be able to fly indoors, that's just out of experience. You spend a lot of time, so you don't want to go outside every time with your drone. Um, they shouldn't be too dangerous, again, because you'll be flying indoor, you want to you wanna experiment with them, and they should have an interface for communication, because, of course, we, what we're talking about today is, is communicating with the JavaScript and controlling them with the JavaScript. Um, so, the drone of choice, it's, it's, it's this one. It's just the Rystack Tello. Um, yeah, I, I've never heard of this company before, but I tried a lot, and this one uh, really hits the sweet spot in the sense that it's relatively cheap, it's around uh, 100 euros. You can buy this one in the store for around 100 euros. I mean, it's still 100, it's, it's not crazy cheap, but this is becoming kind of a, an amount that you can invest uh, just to play around. Um, it's light, it's, it's, it's relatively light. This whole configuration is 95 grams. So uh, again, what we mentioned a few times before already, the lighter the, the drone, the less um, dangerous it is. Um, it has a UDP interface, and we'll talk about that later. So that's, of course, uh, for communication. Uh, it doesn't have any GPS. This is, again, it's, it's a cheap drone, so uh, GPS is it's, it's going to add to the cost, to the weight, to the complexity. Um, but it does have a downward-facing camera. And I don't know if everybody can see it, but we have like two very small cameras here. Um, and we'll talk about that a little bit right now, um, because those are kind of the, 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 the central piece of hardware that we're going to work with. So what, does the, what do the, the, the uh, cameras do? They actually, they, uh, they do visual pattern recognition of the ground. So basically, um, when the drone is flying, the, the, the hardware of the drone is like, it, it by itself, it kind of knows how to stay upright, but it's really hard to know this exactly. So what will happen is that the drone will be tilted a little bit to that side without him knowing, and then it will start moving. And of course, it will have to compensate for this movement, but it needs to know that it's moving. That's why it's using the the, the ca downward facing camera to see the, ca it, it sees the, the, the ground moving, so it knows to compensate a little bit the other side, and if you do that 10 times a second, you, you basically have a hovering drone. And of course, on the other side, uh, on the other hand, if you want to, if you do want to move, you want to know how far you moved. So if I'm, I'm here with my drone, and at the next spot I want to move here, then of course I'll be tilting that way, and we'll be, we'll be flying, but it needs to know when it kind of, um, uh, when uh, got to the point that we were trying to fly to, so it can then, of course, stop. So that's kind of like this, the, the, the Rice Tech Tello. Let's, um, let's really start to, try to, uh, to start to try to control these, these, these drones. Um, so uh, controlling this drone, uh, the drones is actually a, a two-step process. Um, uh, we're going to send commands and we're going to receive telemetry because we want to send commands like what the, the, the drone needs to do and we want to know what the drone thinks he is doing at that point. Um, so we are using for the communication, we are using, that's, that's, I'm not sure if that's a smart move, uh, we're, we're using UDP. Um, so we have TCP and UDP. Probably most of you are, are, are kind of, uh, you know what this means, but um, it's a best effort protocol. So you don't get any feedback. With TCP, you send a message and you get something back. With UDP, it's just a one-way street. Like you send a message, you can receive messages, but they're not necessarily linked to each other. So that means that you send a message and by default, you don't exactly know whether it arrived, like whether the drone actually like received the message, and whether the command was interpreted successfully and whether it was executed successfully. So for now, if we send a command to these drones, we'll just do a wait. We'll just, it's just very simple, we'll say something like take off, and then you just say wait for five seconds and then we'll do something else. So this is very rudimentary. Is it still raining outside? Ah, yes, it's nice Dutch weather. We already had our two days of summer, so I'm... I'm <laughs> Uh, I'm sorry, we're out. Um, yes, so let's do it. Um, let me see if the video switching will go according to plan. Should go to mirroring now. Does, right? Yes. 
Yes, 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 yes. Okay, so uh, let's go to a little bit of code. Um, let me. Yeah, so because this thing is down here, I, I feel a little bit of like the hunchback, Notre Dame. Uh, okay, so, so this is the code, is it? It's probably readable for you guys back there, right? Yes, great. So we do our imports. This is all the boring stuff. We have some constants. It's also boring stuff. We set up a socket. It's also very boring. Uh, so we get this uh, um, small helper command. That's just because of, of, of kind of this low-level protocol where you also need to send the length of the command you're sending. So even this one is, is a little bit boring. I'm sorry about that. Uh, and basically, this is the meat. It's just we have a function called send that we're going to run. And we have, uh, so this is the helper function. And this is just the first command that we're going to send. So why do we have the command command? It's, it's just the way that this drone works. It basically sets the drone into SDK mode. So before you send the command command, it won't listen to any other command. So it's kind of like, hey Siri, that's basically uh, this thing. Or hey Google, or hi Alexa, or hi Floor. Um, so, uh, yes, let me put the drone down. Just turn it on. I just have to wait until it connects to the Wi-Fi. Um, I actually, I, I got the advice to bring your own Wi-Fi because I was told if there are any Russians in the, in the room, they will hack you like within 10 seconds if you're on the public Wi-Fi. And then <laughs> we would have kind of the, the, this was told to me by a Russian guy, so this, I, I think that makes it a little bit less offensive, right? Uh, so we have a command command, so let us just go to, uh, let's make this a lot bigger, 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 bigger. Uh, so say we want to, so we say we wait for one second and then, somebody should get that, take off and then we wait for five seconds. Let's see if that works. Okay, so this already works. So we just send a takeoff com Okay, so we, yeah, we send the takeoff command, but now we have to get it to wait, 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 land. That should work. Command land, yes. So now we're actually controlling the drone. So, so that's kind of like the first step, right? So now we have a, a drone that's kind of controlled, which is cool. So kind of like this is a cool first step. So let's take a little bit further. Uh, let's take off. Let's go to the left. Uh, so I should turn the drone for you guys. It's pointing that way, so it, like left is going to be left. Uh, right. Yes, wait, and then we are going to land. Yes, so let's land. Um, Okay, so it took off. This is the takeoff command. Now it did the left command. It doesn't do anything, so yay. And now it does the right command, 100. And then it does the land. Okay, so that works. So, whoa. That was, yeah, that was more of a crash. So, this advice always, you know, make sure that it, it completely stops. So, what I, th I think with the left, what happened is that. Um, like our, our, our weight here after the takeoff, it was too short. So this, this kind of also shows the, the, the downside of just the basic UDP protocol that you did, uh, I did a takeoff. Like most of the time three is okay, but you have your external factor. So maybe it took a little bit longer before it felt it was finished with the whole takeoff command. Um, and because I sent the left before it was finished with the uh, takeoff command, it didn't receive it and then it didn't do anything. And then it waited until the next command, which was right. 100, and then it did do that command because at that point it was ready for receiving uh, um, uh, for for receiving the next command. So this, you see that right now the UDP protocol it's 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 a bit limited. Um, but let's go to the next thing. So so let's do the receiving of the information. So again, this is a lot of boring code. We have an import, we have a constant, we have setting up of the protocol, and then we just listen. You know, we kind of, I think we all know this, listening to events. In this case, we're just listening to a message, and I'm just going to uh, log it here. So, um, yes, let me just run this code. Sorry? Zoom in. Ah, yes, 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 yes. Let me just, ah, uh, I think I turned it off. 
So my mother gave me the advice, never do live coding talks and never do hardware talks because they are all very unpredictable. <laughs> but yeah, so didn't really listen to her. Um, I need to initialize the drone again. So it's actually going to send me back information. And then we want to listen to the messages. Yes, so. Okay, so, so this is the telemetry coming in. These are just the strings. This is completely unreadable at first, of course, you understand. But I'll, I'll zoom in a little bit more so you can see it even better. And then I'm going to ask you questions about this data. Um, so, you, so you'll see, like, somewhere here. So here you see pitch. You see this is the pitch. Uh, you see the roll. I'm rolling it right now. So you, you've got the data coming in, right? So, so We've, we've, we've got data from this uh, a drone coming in, um, and it's, it's, you know, so, so we can start reasoning about what the drone is doing, and we can start creating this feedback loop. Um, I think, like, it's, it's, I think everybody understands that as soon as you have the string with a few commands, we can kind of extract it and, and map it to an object, so it's, it's a bit more usable within our code. I'm not going to dive into that, but this is basically the information we're getting, and this is, uh, this is the way we're going to... Um, uh, I'm just going to turn it off because it has a tendency to overheat really quickly. I mean, it is a cheap drone. Um, but that's the telemetry. So this is the information coming, uh, coming in. Uh, so let's get back to the presentation. Yes, do it. Um, I, I keep looking there because that's kind of where I'm used that the screen is. There's a screen, yes, okay. Ah, thank you so much. Um, yes, so uh, I promise you step three, and step three is going to be controlling multiple drones at once. So this is when it really gets interesting. So controlling multiple drones at once, basically it's just coordinated flight. You're going to have several drones flying at once, and somehow we want to have coordination between them. So what does this mean? Uh, we, uh, in order for this, uh, to achieve this, we need to know where the drones are relative to each other. So if we have several uh, drones uh, flying, then we need to know where they are relative to each other. Uh, and in, it, in order to know where they are relative to each other, we need to know where a drone is in, in a certain space. So um, did I bring one of the extra pads? Okay, this is going to be interesting, so I have to uh, pull one. Uh, so that's why I'm going to introduce mission pads. Uh, these are these pads. So basically, these are proprietary pads which are made by the same manufacturer of the, uh, uh, of, of, of the drone. So um, these, uh, these mission pads, they, they have this pattern, and they are recognized by the drone's downward-facing camera. So this is kind of a, a combination. So it recognizes this pad. Um, we have eight pads on the floor right now, and they are all unique. And, and you see that there's an eight here. It's not actually recognizing the eight. It's recognizing these pictures. But, but uh, that's for us humans to know which, which, which pad we're talking about. And the, the, the most important thing is that a drone actually calculates its own relative position compared to, the dr to this pad. So I'm going to put it back down and hope that I put it in the right place again. So this drone is actually going to know when it's flying here. Uh, where it is relative to this pad. So at, at this point, it will tell you like it's not exactly above this pad. It's it's like 20 centimeters that way uh, in in that dimension. Um, so so now that's why we have this grid. So we have the eight unique pads. Um, we also know um, the exact positions. Like these are not put down by chance. Of course, I put them in a very specific place because I know where these mission pads are located. Um, and by combining the relative position we get from the drone compared to the pad, we will know the relative position of this drone within this whole grid. And that's basically what we want to know, right? So if we go back to the um, telemetry we were talking about before, you have the MID, so that's the mission I uh, pad ID, it's flying above, you get the X and you get the Y. Um, so we have the ID and we have the relative X and Y. If we want to calculate the position of the drone, it's as simple as getting the X and the Y of the pad that it's detecting, getting a relative X and Y, and if you add them together, you get the X and the Y of the drone. So if we want to move uh, somewhere, um, you get the X and the Y of the drone, 
you get the x of the y where you want to go, and you basically you do the delta x, and that's basically the, the, the distance you want the drone to move at that point. So here the syntax is just go 10, 100, that means go 10 centimeters on the x uh, 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 dimension and 100 centimeters on the y dimension. So, let's dance. Um, I've got, hi, give me like a few seconds to prepare, because the thing is, it's, it's quite important to put them in the right spot at first because otherwise they will crash into each other because they want to um, fly in each other's spot. So, this is the yellow. And we have the gray. Yes. So, are they all connected? Let me just check. Yes, let's get out. The, out of the presentation. Let's go to some code. What? Is it okay? Yeah? We good? Okay. Okay, so I have this small little HUD uh, you see over there, and it's just some React code just for interacting. Uh, it's th th we don't have enough time to go into that. It's kind of how I control all these drones with a lot of buttons. Um, so this is for the four drones, like every column is one drone. I just did the init command, and now we're actually getting some telemetry. So you see the battery, they're all full. You see the temperature, which is, you see it all changing a little bit. Um, this is just for me, so like the UI and the UX is, is terrible. Um, but let's see if we can get them to fly. Nope, that's land. That doesn't make sense. Take off. Yes, OK. So now we have four of them flying. And they're, they're OK. So uh, I'm just taking a look if everything is set up correctly. Let's go to the dance. So I press dance. Ah, so now they're flying to their first spot. And now, like, I'm doing nothing right now, right? So this is just my code telling them what to do. And you see them, like, this is what I call a dance. So uh, you kind of could figure how good of a dancer I am. Like, for me, this is already amazing. But I mean, look at how cute they are. They're kind of like, OK, so he kind of missed a step. There's always this one person in the group, right, who does the wrong. But yeah, so I mean, this is basically coordinated flight. This is just my JavaScript right now, just telling them what to do. Um, I, I, I thought this was cute. And they're doing pretty well. I had to, because the stage is a little bit, uh, so you see Mr. Blue is a bit behind. Yeah, he's always, he's kind of the nerdy of the, the four. And I think there's like one more move, or is this the last? No, this was the last move. So this was them dancing. I'm so happy that they didn't drive. Yay! <laughs> I always, like when they finish, I, I actually feel a little bit proud of them because I really feel like they, they had their first recital, you know, like you're the parent in the back, just seeing your kid dressed up as a tree, like. <laughs> Oh, I'm so proud. Uh, yes, and we go back to the presentation, because how are we on time? We're kind of out of time, so I'm just going to be really quick, because I don't want to kind of ruin your beer drinking time, uh, because I am fully aware it's already quarter past six, and, and, and we had a very long day. So how do I dance? I feel you guys are really smart, so I'm going to be really quick about this. Uh, we have a grid. They're there. This is the first part of the grid. So they want to go there. So I mean, that's basically the code. That's, it's really simple. It's just, it's just a promise that all um, where I do, I eventually did create a feedback system where you send a command. And I'm actually looking at the telemetry to figure out whether the command is successful or not. Because we want to have these promises, because we want to have coordinated flights. So we actually need to know when these uh, drones are finished. And doing this with a timeout wouldn't really make sense. I mean, it could, but then you need to have such a big margin of error that you, know, you don't really get this quick, quick dance. In conclusion, lessons learned. Flying and controlling drones is hard. It's, it's 
very fun, but it's very hard because the quality of the sensor input is really low. This is a very uh, low-cost drone. It's, it's about 100 euros. Uh, so, so the quality isn't that high, so you have to do a lot of correcting. And it's hardware. That also means that there's going to be a lot of unpredictability. So say these drones are flying here right now, somebody opens the door and we get this enormous draft. Suddenly all these drones, they kind of start moving just because of this draft. Your code needs to compensate for that. This is so different than having, from, from having just like this Node.js process in this very controlled environment. Like with this hardware, maybe the one is flying over the other way, uh, other, and suddenly the downdraft is just pushing the other drone away. You kind of have to figure out how to compensate for that. Um, get, get rid of your cats. That's the thing I've, I've learned uh, in the beginning. <laughs> because <laughs> I have a cat and <laughs> it attacked the drone. And, and believe me, the cat will win because it's like they have this, this crazy, they just go berserk when they see a drone. Um, get rid of your plants. Uh, because it's the other way around. I have a lot of plants, and then somehow uh, my drones, they keep attacking the plants, and then you're just looking at your computer, and then I, I, by now I know the sound, and like, and then I have all these pieces of plant flying over my head, and then I know that I had another encounter uh, between these two. So get rid of your plants. Uh, I've said this before, but be prepared to crash a lot. It's difficult, it's very fun, but yeah, you will be crashing a lot, so we need the, we need the cheap drones. Um, I, I, this is actually one I can, can watch like a hundred times because just his face or like his whole body, like <laughs> uh, I like his. <laughs> He's just so disappointed. <laughs> he was so looking forward to this. Okay, one more time. <laughs> um, yeah, so I talked about this before. You need to create your own feedback uh, loop because, you know, it's, it doesn't make sense to do the timeouts. Um, and one of the downsides of this, I mean, this is a pretty nice system and it's really cool, but it, the, the software inside the drone is proprietary. That means that we, uh, we can't touch the code that's actually doing the visual recognition. We just get the interpreted data, which, I mean, I, I would really like to, I know, be able to add my own patterns, which, which isn't possible right now. Uh, that's it. Thank you. The drones flew! And thank you for all!